Matthew chapter 3 and verse um, 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Make his paths straight. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to explain to you is that we are supposed to prepare for the Lord. Amen. And the best way to prepare for the Lord is to follow the best preparer of the ways of the Lord. And that was John the Baptist. And he said, the Bible says he came, preached, saying, he came preaching, so preaching, and he, he preached saying, repent or change. Amen. So this camp is a camp of change. Amen. Amen. It's a camp of change. We are going to turn around. And all those who came forward yesterday and those who will come forward today, it's a time of change. We have to change our outlook and respond properly to what God is telling us. You are not doing anything for me. You know, by God's grace, I'm already a successful minister if that is what it is about. I have places to preach, even invitations I'm invited to preach. I can't go. Not even my own churches, but I have churches, plenty. So I'm not trying to be more successful. I'm trying to obey the Lord. Yeah. And he wants us to do this. He wants us to go out and do his will. So the kingdom of heaven is what we must preach, emphasize, talk about. Now what is the kingdom of heaven like? It is the story of a sower went out to sow. Amen. So if you go back to Matthew 13, you see right there, the Bible says, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So to prepare for the Lord, we have to think about the kingdom of God and what it means practically. Amen. What does the kingdom of heaven mean to us practically? Are you listening to me? Are you still here? Okay? Now, what does it mean? It means a sower went out to sow seeds. So if we are going to apply ourselves to prepare the way of the Lord, we must sow seeds. We must sow seeds. And these seeds are very important so that we can yield, get a harvest. Even though there's technology and there's everything, we still are back to the basic sowing of seeds in order to reap a harvest. So a sower went out to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowls picked them up. Some seeds fell on stony ground. Some fell among stones, and some fell on good ground. So what it means is that some of the seeds we sow are going to amount to nothing. Some are going to amount to nothing. In fact, a large number of them will amount to nothing. Yeah. A large number will amount to nothing. Now, what are the kinds of seeds we can sow? So that I can help you to see and understand. Number one, you can sow seeds of... Um, you can sow seeds of the word of God. Amen. We have to sow the seeds of the word of the seed we are talking about largely is the word of God. Amen. Something to do with the word of God. So it's time to sow seed. Tell your neighbor it's time to sow a seed. Now, you must sow 
a seed of the word of God into your own life. Amen. So, so it's time, if we are going to prepare for Jesus, we must sow seeds into our lives. Amen. You must sow a seed where? Into your own life. Okay? And a seed is a small thing, but it will yield something big. So it's time for us to start sowing seeds of the word of God into our lives. So we must sow seeds of certain preaching messages. We must play them intentionally. So certain preachings, we must play them intentionally. Number three, you must sow certain DVDs. You must watch them. It's a seed you are sowing in your life. You must watch certain DVDs. Preaching DVDs. Because the kingdom, that's the kingdom. The kingdom world, it's about sowing seeds. Alright? And you are the sower. And you can sow into your own heart. Amen. Look, you have to sow certain messages, certain camps you must listen to. Laboriously listen to the whole camp. If you don't do it, don't expect a certain harvest. When I want sometimes a certain anointing on my life, I select the seeds that I want to sow into my spirit. Yeah. And I, and I play those messages. If it's up, you know, depending on what I, what, I'm, what I feel like, I sow those seeds into my spirit. Yeah. If I want to have a feeling of church growth and become anointed with a church growth anointing, I, I like to listen to Yonggi Cho. Yeah. I sow those seeds. No, what I'm saying is if I want pineapple, I'll go and sow pineapple seed there. And then I'll get pineapple. If I want oranges, I go and sow orange seeds there. Now, it's, there's no mystery about it. When I feel the need sometimes for spiritual vision in my life, I start reading rejoiners books. Another seed is to sow is to read certain books. Yeah, you have to read certain books to bring it into your spirit. And when I, when I read certain books, I, 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 I sort of become prophetic. Yeah, I sort of become prophetic when I read certain books. And I sort of supernaturally begin to be directed. Yeah. It's very intentional. I, I sort of become spiritual. <laughs> If, I don't know what you understand by it when I say spiritual. Because being spiritual is, 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 is relative. What you mean by being spiritual? Somebody's ordinary state is spiritual compared to yours. You may be normally carnal, depending on how you are. So, I listen to certain messages. You know, when I have a certain... A certain I, I become anointed in a certain way. And I become empowered, and then the Bible opens in a particular direction. Yeah. When it has to do with the teaching, anointing, and uh, some of the things I do in the ministry, in preaching and teaching, I would sometimes go to Kenneth Hagen, tapes. I rarely watch his videos. I just listen to him. I don't watch his videos. I, re I, don't, I don't watch his videos much. He's more of a hearing person. And I know when I, when I, when I, when I, when I check, I have hundreds of messages. When I check and I look at the time and I see that this preaching ended in one hour, then I skip it. Because I know how that preaching is like. Then I have ones that are two hours. Then I know this one. I know what is kind of 
thing, isn't it? Yeah. It will change at a point. And he dives into things. <laughs> it's, it's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sowing into my spirit. Into my soul. Yeah. I mean, I could tell you, I could tell you about things, programs, and experiences that I've had. I suddenly become addicted as I'm listening. You know, and then you, you get a harvest of that thing. You know, and so your, your spirit is like a, your spirit is like a, it's like a field. Yeah, your spirit, your soul. You see, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, the thing that is going to bless people comes from inside. You see, so you have to sow into that part of you, the spirit. You have to sow into your soul. If you come to Ghana, you are going to sow into your soul. Your souls are affected by apartheid. Even 20 years after, even the American, the black Americans are affected by their apartheid that they had, which Martin Luther King and so on fought against. But they are still affected by it. Even though they may, be, they may have amongst them the world's richest people, you know, but they are so affected. So sometimes even traveling outside is the healing for your soul and the healing for your spirit. And even seeing something, not even hearing. So traveling will be an investment for your soul and for your spirit to see. Do you understand? So you need to take time to sow. That's why everybody here must have a makane. You must have a makane. You must download it onto your phone or download it onto your iPad. Download it somehow and get it. Get an iPad or a Galaxy or any tripod, this Chinese one, there's everything you can get. Did you have a South African iPad? Southpad? No Southpad? Be careful. Yeah. So, so to your spirit. So to your spirit. I, 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 I intentionally sow things into my spirit. Anybody who is operating in this kingdom, which is the kingdom that has come, this is the law of the kingdom. So intentionally into your spirit, and your spirit will bring forth that river. Of that particular thing that you need. When I wanted to flow in the healing anointing, I started to listen to Benny Hinn, not to Kenneth Hagen, and not to so many other people, not to Miles, Miles, Mike Murdoch or Miles Monroe or any of those people. I I I listened to Benny Hinn, even though I didn't understand him. He had a lot of message. You know, Benny Hinn doesn't usually preach from the New Testament. He doesn't mention any verses from the New Testament. It's not Job or Leviticus or Exodus or some of those Psalms. And he can preach with energy from these verses for a long time. Very, with, without, without even reading or referring to them. Yeah. One day he preached for a long time. He said, look, do you see any notes here? I don't have any notes. He's explaining to us what is the meaning of blue, color blue, in the priest's uh, dresses, and yellow, and red, and so many colors, without notes. He said, it is in my spirit. He said, I've, I've soaked these things in for years. Yeah. And he's, he's teaching about the anointing. Wow. So you see, there is nobody who is giving out powerful streams who has not intentionally sowed 
into your spirit. Now, you see, we have intentional and unintentional sowing. You see, when, when, you are, when you are young in the Lord and in the ministry, you can sow into your spirit unintentionally. Like you didn't plan to. Like, you see, I, I used to listen to Kenneth Hagin because I just liked listening to him. And I, I sort of sometimes would feel a newness in my life when I listened to him back in 1987 and 86 and 88. I don't know how many years ago that is. I sort of felt something new in whatever I was doing. So anytime I was praying and waiting on the Lord, I would like to listen to him. So I bought his tapes to listen to, again, just because I like him. I never heard anything bad about him before. And I found listening to him just nice. And I also noticed that when I preached without, I didn't tell anybody that I had listened to Kenneth Hagin. I just preached what he preached. I found that people would make comments or remark after. But when I didn't, nobody would say anything about the preaching. They would just continue and go home. But when I did, I noticed there were certain comments. Oh, it's very powerful and things like that. So I, I noticed that pattern. That is what led me to listening to messages and learning how to listen to preaching when I wanted to preach. So you can unintentionally sow a seed. And one day I was listening to this Kenneth Hagin when suddenly something jumped out of the tape and I felt something entering my spirit here. I was kneeling down. And when it entered, I heard a voice and the voice said, from today, you can teach. Yeah. I, in 1988, I was 25 uh, years old, I think. Yeah, 1988, June. I was in a Hospital working there as a medical student. Unintentional. I had no plan. It's just I like listening to him. And I just used to put it on. You know, I had a friend, you know, called, I had a friend, and he used to say, soak it in, soak it in, soak it in. You know? It means we don't listen to message. You soak it in. So that was a man. Soak it in. Like you soak in. You don't, you don't just listen to a message. You soak it in. So I had a mind that you have to soak in messages. You don't just listen. You soak them. Wow. So it was something that we were doing. Soaking in preaching. And one day unintentionally I came on this experience. Now, how do I know it's real? I received an anointing. He said from today you can teach. I remember that I had a little church in a little classroom. And the Lord said, I'll prove it to you. I'll show you. But the proof of it is 20, 20 years later, or 25 years later, right? The evidence of the, that anointing is, is that seed. It's what we are seeing here, that you are sitting here listening. Even these pastors from, I think, books. You saw a, you read a book of mine. I just read a book. I, I've not seen him before. He read my book. And suddenly was connected. So people that I've never even met before, you know, soaking in a seed and then it, it starts to have a certain effect. You know, because there are many books and there are many preachings, but a, a preaching that has an effect. So as I'm standing, I'm anointed. Yeah, it, it, it's supernatural. You may not see it, but you can see the effect. You see, the anointing, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You can't see, but you can see the effect of it. You can't see it, but you can see the effect of it. That's how the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, the one that is born again is like the wind, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You can't see it. Like if wind is, if the breeze starts to blow suddenly on us, we won't see the breeze, but we will feel the effect of it. You can never see it moving. So when there's an anointed person, you can't see. I've met many anointed people. You can't see it on them. Sometimes they are not feeling well. Sometimes they, are, they just look ordinary. Some of them look old. Some of them look weak. Some of them look sick. Whatever. But they are still anointed. 
Because an anointing is not something you can see. If you could see, then everybody would treat an anointed person very well. But the anointing is for those who have eyes to see. <laughs> yeah. Truly. I mean, how many South Africans or Ghanaians write a book and it is translated into Russian? And the people cannot speak a word of Russian. And they are reading the books. <laughs> all the books in Russia. All my books in Russia. I was in Russia. I don't know if it's this year or last year. A Russian television station came to interview me. And they had a question. And that question is one of the most amazing questions I've ever been asked. Do you want to know the question they asked? Yes. Are you sure you want to know the question they asked me? The question they asked me is, did you ever think you would become Doug Heward Mills? I said, what? <laughs> what a question. I said, well, what are you talking about? It's like, to them, Doug Heward Mills is a great person in Russia. They don't speak even broken English. They're not even the one word of broken English. Only pure Russian. When you ask them my book, they will mention all the books in Russian. And they have been soaking in in Russian. They don't speak a word of English. Many churches and pastors. Wow. So I'm saying that you cannot see the, what do you call it? The anointing, but can see the effect of it. You see. So uh, that is unintentionally catching the anointing or unintentionally sowing seeds without even knowing what you are doing. But when you become mature, like many of you are pastors and you are working in the ministry, you have to intentionally sow seeds. Because it's, it's not like maybe there was a time where your parents would tell you to brush your teeth and have your bath. But a time comes, you will have to have your bath on your own without being told to have your bath. True or not true? So when you mature, God expects you to know that, hey brother, you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in yourself and sow seeds in yourself. Intentionally and consciously. Yeah. And, the, and you see the seeds, the seed is the word of God. But every seed has its taste and its slant. Some seeds are anointed with more of church growth or more of miracle power, more of uh, 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 healing power, more of the presence of God. Different without so many, but they are all seeds of the word. And you need to intentionally invest in yourself and sow the word of God and sow seeds in your life. And when, when, you do, when you do it, you are going to see a difference in your life. Now, when I invite you to come to Ghana to learn and to be trained, like I did for Vuyo and Mandla and a lot of them here, when I do that, you still have to take a decision to do it. Yeah. You cannot force a person to drink water, even if you put 10 bottles of water in front of him. You still have to take it and drink it. Even if we open your mouth and, ah, you cannot, you can refuse to drink it. You must swallow. At the last point, you still have to do it. So if you do not do it, there's, there's always something up to you. Always. So God wants you to become a sower of seeds. You will always have to sow seeds. Wow. And what I'm telling you is for your own benefit. You see, the church and the work of God is higher than any possible job you could ever be involved with. 
It is in your own interest to do the church work. Like Dr. Go was explaining, just being a dancer is not what we, it is nice to dance. But we want pastors who dance. And pastors who do things. Not just dancing. Amen. Amen. So God has a great plan for you. Now what do you need most? What do you need? You see, as I operate in the anointing, I operate in different types of anointings. Right now, I'm operating in an apostolic anointing. This is the anointing that builds churches. I'm not, doing, I'm not in a healing anointing mode. I'm not even in ordinary teaching. I'm not really just teaching. You see? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm building churches here. Amen. You may not see, but I'm, actually, I'm fighting to build churches. Yeah, I'm fighting to sow seeds, to build churches. And you see, I don't have to say much. The, the wind is not something you can see. But you can see the effect of it. We have about 1,800 different churches. Yeah. 1,800 different churches. And we are counting. And we are praying for 10,000 churches. Hallelujah. And I know we are going to cross it. It will be a small number. You keep watching. Keep criticizing. Keep sitting back. You miss your reward. You could have been part of it. Yeah. So this is the kingdom. Let us rise up. Now, these are sowing seeds in yourself. Also, we must go and sow human beings. We, you must, we must sow human beings. Into Bible schools. Yes. That is why we are taking people to Bible school. When we saw people, the person we are saw is not a missionary, is a raw person. He has no knowledge. We are sowing the person into the school. And that person is going to receive sowing into his soul. And he's going to come out different. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we must plant sow churches. We have to sow churches. We sow a seed of a church. Are you there? And the church must be intentionally planted. Those seed churches which come naturally that you are in Pretoria. So let's plant another one just next by. And let's plant another one next by. That is unintentional sowing of seeds. But if we are to do God's work, eh, then all of us have to rise up and intentionally sow seeds into places, into cities like this place. Some of you have not been here before. How many have not been here before? Have you not seen that there are people here? Are there people here? Plenty. At the mall. Yeah. You've already been able to go to the mall. There is a mall here, but is there a church here? There is a mall, there is a bank, there is everything. There is KFC here. KFC have got branches. To eat oily chicken. That is not healthy. Chicken that grows without feathers. Chicken that grows super fast. Within three weeks, it is very big. Hey! It's a mega size. They have branches everywhere. And we are providing spiritual food. But there is no branch here. Huh? And which of us are going to do that? Amen. Amen. Which of us are going to do that? So, I tell you, 
what I'm sharing with you is very important. We are going to plant churches everywhere and intentionally. Keep, keep laughing. Keep, keep finding it funny. Keep seeing me as a fool. But you cannot argue with the results. Yeah. You cannot. Amen. Amen. Keep, keep, keep finding it funny. Keep thinking I have nothing else to say. Keep thinking to yourself, why am I keeping on doing that? You are poor. You have nothing. You are still struggling with your thousands of mortgages. <laughs> I'm building churches. My churches are working. And the evidence of the churches that are working is there. Yeah. They are working real. Look at you sitting here. I just called you. I said, come, I'll be there on Thursday. Do you know why you are here now? You are here now because I, this is the time I can come. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> That's why you are here in the middle of the week. I'm going somewhere. I said, come at this time. I'm going, I'm going to do something. It's not, I don't come here because it's convenient. I came here at this time because I'm going somewhere. And I said, come and fit into my program. And then if you meet me there. And more people want to come. I say, you can come. Wow. wow. Keep on watching. As I keep on saying the same thing. And I keep on emphasizing. There is no better work than to work for God. There is no higher job than the job of doing the church building and church planting. There is no better work than to go ye into all the world, into all nations, and preach the gospel, and gather people, and teach them what has to be taught. There is nothing else. Keep on doing whatever you are doing. I don't mind. I started with a lot of people, and a lot of the people who I started with today are begging for money. Just money to live. Yeah. And I tell you, even people are even jealous of the church. Yes. I have people who, instead of sponsoring the church and sponsoring the crusades, they see the church as more prosperous than they are. They don't want to give. They feel that the church rather is blessed. <laughs> Have you seen something before? Is that the church rather is blessed? The church, the church rather has money. Yeah, it's fantastic. The thing that you despise, the thing that you feel is not worth giving your life for, the thing that you felt is nothing. It's not any good job. A bank is a good job. A secular work is a good job. A mobile company is a good job. That's what you feel is a great thing. When I'm giving myself to do the highest work, that one you think it is, it is, it is nothing. Keep watching. We are still on the journey. We shall see what is the real work and what is the important work. So my friend, let me tell you, it is time for us to respect the time has come for kingdom work, sowing of seeds. Let's prepare for the Lord by planting 500 churches, 1,000 churches only in South Africa. Yeah. Only in South Africa. Yeah. Let us have 1,000 churches only in South Africa. Everybody can have a church if you will listen to what we are saying. I am telling you how to be because I am the number one person who came around without any gift or any special. Even when people even see me, they never choose me. They never choose me. Every time I go somewhere, so he's very unassuming. He's very simple. I, I don't know what they mean because I'm not trying to be simple. Huh. I don't understand what they are talking about. It's very simple. It's very this. I don't know what they are expecting. Keep watching. I'm telling you, this is the greatest work. There is no better work than this.
to plant churches. It, the kingdom of God is about sowing seeds. And one of the seeds for a community is a church. We have to plant and sow a church here in this hazy view. As we are here, is it a town? Is this a town? Hazy view. Yeah. Why should that be KFC but there is no church? In hazy view. And, and you, why can you not come here? Why can you not come? It's a shame to you. It's a shame to you. A sower went out to sow. A sower didn't sow in his house. He went out. Why can't you come here, move here because of the church and leave here? That work you are doing, which is not any great work too. Can you not come and do it here? And the sower went out to sow. Keep staying at a place and not going out. And you will see whether you will even prosper there. Later on, you become a lay pastor who is jealous of full-time pastors. And a lay pastor who is trying to take over a church to you convert it to become your secondary business. Because your primary business is not working. So now the congregation that you have, you want to convert it into your secondary business. Yeah, I've seen some of them. So it is time to spread out and to plant seeds and some of you say oh but we have tried it it, it, it has not worked that we are doing seed business every ejaculation of a man ejaculation let's not talk about things you can't understand well, I have so many things you never understand I want to say things that you understand if you ejaculate a man and you take the ejaculate. One meal. You have, sometimes you can have two meals. A man can ejaculate three meals. Depending on how much he has stored up there. <laughs> yes. No, you cannot have 40 meals. It's too much. of all that comes out okay if you take one meal do you understand meal like a liter is made of a thousand meals so if you take one meal if you have one million seeds in it you will never be pregnant one million if in that one meal now you see that meal that you see there You, you, you see, you don't see seeds. It's not like spotted, like um, Quaker oats or, or something that you see. No, it's just a plain liquid. You get it? Yeah. And you see it like that, but in it are seeds. So we have to check and put it under the microscope to see how many are there. So if you take one meal and you put it there and you start to search and start counting, if you have one million, one million, it cannot make a woman pregnant. Yes, you need only one. Only one will make you pregnant. If you have one million spams. Doctor, am I saying that? You're a gynecologist, right? Yeah, this is a gynecologist. Is it true, doctor? Yeah. If you have two million in that one meal that you are looking at, you can still not be pregnant. Three billion. You cannot. You need just one. Now, sometimes you sleep with a boy. Some, there are some girls like that. So I want to sleep with him to test, uh, test him and so on. So, yeah. But you cannot tell when the person ejaculates and everything looks normal, that there's not even one spare minute. 
So some people have been deceived by that in, when they are married. Because you can't tell. Everything will be normal. You, he may come up with three meals, four meals of whatever. Everything looks like this. Whatever. But there's 30 bin just once per minute. It's plain. It's like plain tea. No milk. No sugar. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm talking about? I need you to understand it. If you have five million, five million in that one, you cannot be pregnant. Still, ten million, ten million, still, fifteen million, twenty million. Usually, if it is less than Forty million, usually, you will not be pregnant. That is to help you to understand how seeds work. We may take, we may take. This person has gone. This person has gone. This one hasn't worked. This one hasn't worked. When we are working with seeds, a lot of them don't work, but some will work, and the ones that work, hey, if only one. You'll be surprised at what will come out of it. Just one. Out of plenty that are sold. Yes. Just one. Doctor, have I said the truth? Uh, 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 doctor, have I said the truth? You have said the truth, Bishop. What is your specialty? Gynecologist. Wow. He says I've told the truth, so it must be true. Yes. Yeah. So when you become discouraged and turn away from seed planting because of three seeds that you planted that have not worked, then you don't understand that a sower went out to sow. You don't understand when you say a sower went out to sow. Yeah. A lot of the seeds that we plant like books, tapes, CDs, this, a lot of them are wasted. There is no question about that. There is no question about that. But the one that will come into the hands of just one person, that is enough to cover up for all the wasted spams and seeds. Come, look at it. Stand up here. Look at a very big person. On the day that he was conceived, perhaps 39 million sperms were wasted. <laughs> yeah! Maybe, maybe, maybe your, the, your father's sperm count was maybe 72 million, 80 million, 100 million. We can have per meal. Per meal. And if they haven't had sex for some time, it is even more. <laughs> Only that when you have a sex for some time, although the sperms are more, they are sluggy, they feel lazy. They are lazy sperms. Yes. So we don't encourage when we are trying to have a baby to wait too long. Well, they, they become lazy sperms. Yes. So you need the need the sperm need to be active to swim quickly because it's a competition. A lot of millions running. Huh? That is where phlegmatics come from. It is lazy spams. <laughs> Look at a very big man like this. Well, maybe that day, seventy-three million spams were wasted. And just one produced a nice young man like this. Clap for Jesus. So those are the back. They, they don't even mind if they don't see, isn't it? Those, those are the back, isn't it? Bible school 
go and he's come. His church has not worked. Somebody went here, it has not worked. You don't understand. We rather have to send more, 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 more. Have to come to the Bible school more. We are waiting for that one person, that two, the second, the third, the person. What that person? You'll be surprised. Huh? Among the many that you plant a seed in, you can never even tell which one is going to do well. My mother-in-law is a teacher. She says you can never tell by looking at your students' faces who is going to do well. My mother-in-law, she's a teacher. She says you can never tell who is going to do well. Yeah, you can't tell. You never judge the student by looking at them in that. You can't see this one is going to be president. You will never know. Wow. wow. So as Sora went out to sow, it's now time to restart more churches. More, more. Johannesburg, Pretoria, here, here, every county, province, whatever. Don't tell me we started, it didn't work, this and that. I saw what? I saw what? You must be more determined than Alexander the Great. You must be more determined than Alexander the Great. Do you know Alexander the Great? He was a very wild conqueror of lands. And when he took over from his father, King Philip, he went to conquer Asia, Persia, India, and anywhere that was available. Egypt. He named about 57 cities after himself, including Alexandria in Egypt. He, he named it after himself. Or when he conquered it, he names Alex. Yeah. Alexander. <laughs> yeah. You must be more determined. Yeah. He was you see, war is fought in an atmosphere of energy. One time he was in India and he went to a certain town called Mali. I mean, he, he attacked the city himself. He ran himself. And he ran and he climbed over the wall and jumped into the people's town. He was alone. Before his people could come and, 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 and even save him there. It's like the guy is lost. Tell your neighbor, I am more determined than Alexander the Great. <laughs> One day, he went to a certain town. He was on his way. And when he saw there was a small city, and it was on an island, and that island had walls so high, over 60 feet high, you can imagine it. Several people have tried to conquer. No one has been able to conquer, but they were there. You know, it's called a city of Tyre. Tyre and Sidon. Tyre. And he tried to, he sent messages to the people. He said, look, surrender. I have come. They said, who are you? We have been here for years. No one has been able. An island in the sea. And he's on land. Ships cannot go there because it's surrounded. Unless they open, you cannot go. And he told them, surrender. They had a meeting. The people said, we will not surrender. He had the meeting. Then he told the people, let me send you for the last time to go and talk to these people. I say, I, Alexander the Great, I have come here. Open your gates. I am coming. They cut off the heads of the people that Alexander the Great sent and threw them over the wall into the sea. Alexander the Great said, okay, he called a meeting and said, now I am going to build a road from the land through the sea to reach you. You will see something. I will come there. Even if it is 
is one year, I will build the, the road. Everybody should go and find rocks. Add it one by one. He started from the beach. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Ah, for months. I'm coming to you. I will never leave you. Because it was on his way. They said, you can leave. They said, no. When I leave them, they'll be behind me. I don't want anybody behind me. I don't want anybody behind me. He added rock after rock. And the people were in the city. They were watching him. Then they saw that clay. The thing is serious. So the guy is actually coming towards them. <laughs> so in the middle of the road, when they were building, the people in the island opened and brought a ship out and came and landed and attacked all the people who were killing and bent because they were building with wood and stones. Bend the thing down. But they have already reached. Alexander said, continue. He built a tower. A tower to, to fight the people coming. So he built towers and they were going step by step until they reached the walls. And then they climbed inside. Hey. When they entered, it wasn't easy. He crucified them. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I am more determined than Alexander the Great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I said, tell your neighbor, I am more determined than Alexander the Great to do the church work. Are you determined, those, these two, two guys? You don't look determined. Huh? You don't look determined. Will you look determined? Fire them! Tell your neighbor, the one behind you, I am more determined than Alexander. Then. I rock by rock, rock by rock, he made a road more than 20 feet wide to, to reach them. Yeah, but he's going with chariot and all his weapons. It's not about one person going, we are all going there. We are entering. We will climb the wall. We will be there in the sea water. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot be turned back. You cannot be resisted or told, go away. I cannot go away from South Africa. I am determined to plant churches here. No matter what, you cannot say I should go away. Hey, I said I won't go anywhere. I'm coming to plant more churches here. Hey! I will not go away. I said I will not go away with my chest. I am coming more wilder than before. You don't know. You don't understand seed work. We pour the seed. We ourselves know that the thing, you know, a lot will be wasted, but we are pouring it in. We are waiting to see whether one will turn into something magical. Look at this boy. Come. Out of that liquid, if you like, you take some of the spams. Next time you ejaculate, put it in your hand like that and see. You must be married to do this experiment. You must be married. If you are not married, wait till you are married. <laughs> Take it and put it in your hand and you will look after some time to turn into water. It, at first it is like gelatin. After some time it will turn into water. Pure water. You see it like that. Out of that water, look at a human being standing here with a heart pumping. Let me check. Aye! With a liver, with kidneys, one here, 
of one here. Long intestine, I can pull the intestine all the way to here. Yeah, very long. Eyes with a two cord. These two eyes are connected behind like this. They are coming to the back here like this. Two eyes. Special brain and a special small brain at the back for balancing. There's a small brain, apart from the main one, there's a small brain for balancing. You know when you go to the, uh, to pump your tire, they say we have to balance the tire. There's a balancing brain here. At the back here for balancing. <laughs> Doctor, is it not true? <laughs> hey! Special. With a bladder. He has a bladder. Do you know that you can stay without weaving for one week? Your bladder, will, you will see the pressure. It's got a special muscle for equalizing the pressure. When it becomes tense, then the, the, the bladder will have a special mechanism to relax by itself. It just be, it just be. That's why sometimes you feel like we win, but you can keep it for some time. Realize that I felt like we win about three hours ago, but I'm still there having we win here. Yeah, it is a special muscle to be that test that I don't know by itself. Just, ah, you just hey. out of that water, out of that little water, that little thing you couldn't see one has made a complicated magical human being like this standing here with lungs one here one here from water just came just one lungs one is here one is here and muscles this is the pectoralis major and behind this pectoralis minor over here deltoid muscle and then bicep triceps at the back and rotator uh, and all my kappa, all my all of different muscles, they're all there. Hey. Special, special. It's fantastic. One seed has produced all these types of meat. He has different. Uh, when they say, "Do you want ramp steak?" Different steak. These are. Latismus dorsi, they are all here. Big, big rectus abdominis, big muscles, they are all different. With fat, when we cut, you see yellow fat. When we cut like that, you see yellow first with blood, then it will be coming, then you go down. Many things out of that water. And your complex nose, all your bones here, they have holes in them, like beds. All beds have, their bones have air. So their bones are light. Yeah, their bones are light. That's why dinosaurs, they have dinosaurs, they have bo uh, air in their bones because we, we believe that they are a mixture of lizards and birds. Yeah, out of that water. And you should see all the animals doing it. They all produce some small water and then the next time, the leopard is coming. <laughs> so look, it's time to sow more seeds. So, so, that church we started, it hasn't worked. Hey, so what? You know the number of churches I've started that haven't worked. The ones that have worked are more than the ones that have, been, that have not worked. As of now. But I've planted many. Do you know the people I've preached to? The camps I've held. I mean, I remember the first camp I held in the UK. When I went home, I didn't know. Only one person, his name is Peter. He came to me, he said, he said, I want to be a, I want to be a missionary. I said, what? Are you sure? I think double mega missionary church or so. He came, he was, he was a lecturer in a university in, in, in London. He said, I want to be. Nobody else minded me in the camp. All my preaching, this, everything. Oh, they were just looking at me. It is nice. 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 Yeah, only Peter came. Only Peter. And he said, I will go to Australia. I said, Are you sure? And you see, when people say, I will go, you have to wait because... Plenty, plenty talk. I'll go, I'll go, but he never went. I watched him. His wife was pregnant. He was going to have it. He left London, went to Australia, found somebody and stayed with him. I need to stay in your house. So I stayed in your house. He stayed there and started a church in Australia. Today, he's in India, more churches, Australia. We have church in Perth, in Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Fiji, Papua New Guinea. All over, all from his going there. What? And nobody minded me. Like, how we have a camp? You would think that everybody said, Yeah, Bishop, I'll go, I'll go. Nobody. Only one person. Just one. And then you get complex things like this. Today he's in India. 
is in India. Liver, spleen, <laughs> small intestine, pancreas at the back. At the back there, behind. Pain. If you have pain in your pancreas, it's special pain. When you do a special, special movement, the pain will go. That's how we know that it's from there. Yeah. So many things. Complex. From a seed. One seed. So for me, don't come to me and tell me, we started to send me one. It was before this camp. Now we are talking about a sower went out to sow. And so I asked you, ask your neighbor, have you never read and so I went out to sow? You never read and so I went out to sow. He went out. There must be sowing. There must be sowing. Yeah. And you are the one going to be sown. You are the seed. Sometimes you are the, the field and sometimes you are the seed. Yeah. And we are planting churches, churches, churches. Churches. Do you see what the president's wife was saying, Mrs. Taylor? She was saying that she, you, she's surprised to see us going to all the, the sunk. I said that when she heard, what? Why are you going to hear? Hear, hear. Because Christian, why should she, she be surprised that a pastor is going to Zwedru to preach? I mean, why should she be surprised? But it's surprising. Because if there's no money there, people don't go there. <laughs> People don't go there and I'm determined not to follow finances. I'm not being led by, as many as are led by rams and dollars. They are the spirit, the children of God. No. I'm determined not to be led by money. Money cannot make me go to places or not to go to places. I don't follow that. Long ago, I disconnected myself from those things. Yeah, money shall not decide where I go and what I do. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here wearing my t-shirt and preaching to you. You think I don't know how to do miracle convention on television and whatnot. You think our church is poor. We can do all those things. We have the money to do it if it is about that. But it's not what we are looking about. One day, I shall be driving in South Africa. And I will see the sign. And another sign. And I come to another. You know, when I was coming, I drove. I couldn't see any lighthouse sign. I didn't see any sign at Middleburg. I didn't see a sign at Nelspruit. I didn't see a sign at White River. I didn't see any sign at uh, uh, Hazy View. I didn't see any sign at uh, Whitbank. If you were there, but I didn't see your sign. I saw KFC sign. What I say to you is shame. Yeah. What is in hazy view? Is it ghosts? Is it not human beings whom Christ died for? Are you congratulating me for going to where there are souls? It's like you're almost congratulating a doctor for having a clinic. Most doctors don't have to congratulate the doctor for having a clinic and looking after the sick. Why should you congratulate a doctor for having a clinic? Is it not his work? But it's now unusual for pastors and Christians to do their work. That God has called us to. May you be the next seed. Yeah. What? How many seeds do we have? How many seeds do we have? Seed of what? Seed of what? The word. And seed of what? People? No, seed of the word. What type of seed? Of the seed of CDs, isn't it? Seed of what? DVDs. Seed of what? Books. Seed of what? Podcast seed. Podcasts. Wow. What are the seeds? Human beings. Into Bible schools. Stand up, everybody. Stand up. Stand up. If you are here, you want to be a seed. You want to be a seed that will be sent to plant a church. Come to the front. Not the first people who came, the first fruits. But you want to be a seed. You want God to use you as a seed. Come. Come here now. Yeah. To plant a church. Not the first people that came, the first. If you are not first, don't come. You want to be a seed. Come all the way. Let me pray with you. 
I want to be a seed. God should use me as a seed and plant me. I said, well, some didn't work, and so what? Huh? Some didn't work, and so what? It's seed work. We are working with seeds. You may be the magical seed that's going to produce a liver, a heart, lungs, this complex and fantastic things. Come, come. I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you at least. Prayers are very important. You'll be surprised that the prayer that I'm praying will have a certain effect. You want to be a seed. God should use you to plant a church. God should use you to plant a church and use you as a seed to be trained. Use you as a seed to do his work. Lift your hands. This is the second fruits. The first fruit is yesterday. These people are second fruits. Lift your hand and pray. Everybody pray for a moment. We are praying. Mandolomo shatala mandele meke parandala mamandala.
your hands up. Father, thank you for all these that are offering themselves as seeds. Thank you, Lord. Your kingdom is about seeds. We are satisfied. We understand it, Lord. And so we offer ourselves as nothing, Lord. Very small. But Lord, we thank you that out of nothing can come something wonderful. Bless, O oh Lord, and anoint all these ones who have lifted up their hands. My God, let it be a great fire sent into their soul. A fire that will never go out. A light that will never be dimmed. A power that can never be resisted. A river that will always flow out of them. A river of life. To minister blessings to many, many, many people. Take it now. Take it. Take the grace of God. Take the power of God. God's grace upon your life. Take it for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared. Receive it. Take in a deep breath and receive the grace of God. Receive it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. But God has anointed you to do his will and to serve him in a special way. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the grace of God that bringeth church planting, church seeds all over this wonderful and patient nation of South Africa, which has waited for its own people to arise and do something to help this nation. Lord, the politicians have failed us. But we know your spirit cannot fail us. Your word will not fail us. Your power will not fail us. South Africa shall be saved. South Africa shall be healed. South Africa shall be restored. Yea, Lord, your mercy appear unto South Africa. And how does this mercy appear? It appears through the seeds that are sprinkled all over the soil all over the spiritual soil of this nation the seeds of God the seeds of missionaries the seeds of pastors the seeds of churches the seeds of your word all over from the north to the south yeah Lord the forgotten ones the neglected ones the small towns the small cities all corners we thank you that your power is working in all these places through your seeds that are being planted. I hear the sound of marching feet. I hear the sound of an army. I hear the sound of a huge army. Yeah, who are these? These are the seeds of God. These are the seeds that are marching on. They are marching to the forgotten places. They are marching to the dark places. They are marching to the borders. They are marching to the villages. The places where no one loves. Where no one goes. Yeah, they are marching. Why are they marching? Where are they going? They are marching to bring light where there is darkness. To bring hope where there is no hope. Why are they going? They are going with healing hands. Why are they going? They are going with the power of God. Why are they going? Because the sower went out to sow. And they are going out to sow a seed. Yes, this is why. This is why this army is marching. This is why this army is running. This is why this army is trained. This is why this army is equipped. It is an army of seed-bearing fighters, seed-bearing warriors, seed-bearing sowers. Yeah, a sower is going out to sow. A sower is going out to sow. Thank you. Thank you for victory through the seeds planted all over this nation, South Africa. 
shall be saved in Jesus name for they shall not be released to go into captivity into homosexuality into sex and drugs and murder for I have resisted it says the Lord I have opposed it I have lifted up a standard to resist the flood of wickedness that is coming upon your nation yea for your nation shall be saved it shall be rescued by seed power by power of seed bearing warriors who shall do my work the work of Jehovah the work of the Lord Father thank you thank you for the small ones people don't respect them but you respect them Lord for those whose faces don't command respect whose faces are disregarded I thank you for choosing them I thank you for liking them I thank you for sending them they shall go they shall march they shall be used those despised of the world those rejected of the world for yes says the Lord in my wisdom I have chosen that which is rejected and I have selected that which is disappointed and disillusioned and that which no one likes I have chosen it and I shall use it to confound the wisdom of this world and confuse them I shall confuse them at the latter end for they shall be surprised I shall surprise them says the Spirit of the Lord lift your hand and receive a surprise a divine surprise you are the selected one you are the chosen one you are the next you are the next anointed person to move into a city and to move into a town the power of God is upon you there is a light shining on your forehead the demons can recognize you they can see that you are coming I see you going out there doing his will being anointed and favored of the Lord in every town you shall find a job in every place you shall stay in every place that your foot shall tread I have given it to you go go a sower went out to sow a sower went out to sow a sower went out to sow and you shall go out to sow thank you father if you can use anything now Lord use us my God
a sower went out to sow and he was not disappointed yeah the sower went out to sow amen don't let anybody turn you back I said don't let anybody send you back you must be more determined than Alexander the Great yeah you must have more energy than Alexander the Great Run over the wall, even if it's only you. You are ready to enter. <laughs> wow. All right. Turn off the lights. We're going to watch a short clip. I see some people outside. Are you part of us? Why don't you come in? It's nicer when you come in and you sit down. We feel that. You are participating. Or oh, you want a wee wee break? No break. Yeah. Bladder is adjusting. Wow. Okay. Are you sure you can see the film? You can hear? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 